shoppers pushing to Walmart this holiday season looking for bargains. They're expected to shove the retail giant $17 billion in annual profits even higher. And that is not sitting well with Tiffany Baroy, who's married with two kids. It's very, um, how should I say that, um, disgusting because, you know, a lot of times um, when you don't make the money that you need, you can't get things to provide for your family. She says she's been at Walmart for two years, working 19 to 40 hours a week, and made just $12,000 last year. I just feel that Walmart should pay us more than enough to, to support our families, more like um, $25,000 a year. Are you able to get by on the money you made from Walmart? No. I mean, yes. She is part of the protest group Our Walmart, an association of disgruntled employees. Along with others, they've tried to pressure Walmart enlisting members of Congress, city councils, anyone they can arguing that the super retailer is essentially exploiting the hunger for jobs. Walmart, however, has pushed back hard. President and CEO Bill Simon. Our pay is in the top half of what retail offers that are just Walmart U.S. cites a litany of numbers to counter the accusations of unfair wages. The company has 1.3 million employees with more than half full time. The average pay is $12.83 an hour, more than $5 above minimum wage, and more than the average rate for all hourly retail salespeople in America. Our management team, our super managers, started around $55,000 a year. Our store managers average $570,000 a year. So it's a good opportunity. The math clearly works for more than 300,000 Walmart employees who have been with the company for more than 10 years. But not for Tiffany Roy and others on the lower end of the Walmart case. Why don't you just go work for someone else? I've been looking for a job and it's hard to come out. And that area seems to be one of the chief complaints from some of these people who are upset with Walmart. They're saying, look, even if Walmart is understanding, even if they'll offer people a chance to work and schedule to move up, that sort of thing, essentially what they're saying is Walmart is simply so powerful in the marketplace that whatever it does creates a de facto base level of employment for a whole community and affects other businesses too. Walmart, of course, says, look, we're a private business. We are sensitive to the our employees, we're sensitive to things going on in the economy, but we can't fix everything. This is a prime business about there to make profit. It's a fascinating debate here about the power of private business in a public setting and, and what it really does and how many are possible or not. And it's fast. So uh, we just try to show us uh, some of the things that we are going to be discussing, uh, which is one uh, of our the organization of the multinational, one is employee motivation of the people motivated and another is so I think we will just uh, start with the strategy. So uh, the topic, the motive that we had gotten was uh, team. So what we have uh, done here is I have a team is the topic that we have chosen and for uh, those of you who do not know this background images of uh, the famous speech by Marty Luther King Jr. Uh, the I have a dream speech. So we have uh, used hack intentionally because I mean the dream did not come to get to. So we just move uh, on to the in the setting that we are going to employ. So how do yeah. uh, so um, Walmart is basically a company that uh, operates on low cost labor. So we want to take a industry panel. So we want to be talking specifically about uh, the Indian IT industry and the kind of uh, buildings uh, uh, and the set that they employ. Although this can be applied for the a lot of other process in the cost of and the industries. Ashish will be playing the role of this uh, HR, uh, the owner of an IDES company in India and he's facing issues of employee motivation and how to keep these costs down. And so he, he's so worried about it, he's having dreams about this entire issue where I come in. So I am basically the boss of the Islam office and I come in put, taking up the uh, I, uh, I take a form of Sam Walton and I sort of talk to him about it. We going to we thought of taking this technique of Socrative dialogue where basically I pretend to be this expert in employee motivation and employee uh, you know how to get these people to work at lower wages and uh, we just going to see a lot of interesting things that come out uh, which is obviously the point of the Okay, 
deviated them from everybody else, the working class. So this unionization has not as yet happened with us, but I really, really wonder. I mean, uh, the day is not very far when these people will really wake up to the reality of, I mean, what they go through. And so it's basically where do we perform when they don't have? Keep your efforts. That is what we try to do. So we have a lot of programs to make sure that uh, you know employees feel like they employees know they're being called. We have an open door policy. Anyone can walk in and tell me uh, what they want. In fact, a lot of the problems that I we've solved happen because people right from the lowest uh, employment track, uh, you know, people from the rank and file have come up and propose it. We do that. We have uh, things like management by walking around where employees are. Store managers walk around and find out the issues that these other uh, that the people below them face. We are always trying to listen. But, but trying to you know, the thing is, uh, I know that the managers have to get the things done. Whatever has to be done, has to be done. How it has to be done, has to be done. So they can't just, you know, pretend to be listening or uh, doing good all the time. Obviously, well, that's in the end, you have to run the business. So, you do what you have to do, but you have to make them just believe that you are listening to them. You have to make them feel happy about wanting to work at all. So, anyways, coming back to my opinion, what do you do over these many years? Right. So, first of all, let me say that we do not interfere when it comes to forming unions with the companies. We do not, uh, when if a company, if, if, sorry, uh, if employees feel that they want to form a union, we just first try and make sure that it's not one person who's trying to browbeat them into doing it. We try to make sure we have elections so that we see that the popular mandate is there for unionization. At the same time, we want to, we personally believe that unions really don't serve the purpose that they are intended, that they were intended to do for. Unions basically serve only the purpose of union leaders. They really do not serve the purpose, they do not serve the interests of the actual people who form these unions. But of course, this is our opinion there and that and there. So while the election is going on, we bring our own team in. We just try to show them how uh, unions are created uh, or how the after effects or unintended consequences of these unions might end up uh, end up being. And uh, if after the election again they still want to have their union, so this seems to be you are just propagating your idea whatever means. But anyway, so you talked about keeping your employees happy. I'm still not clear about how to you know, keep them happy and motivated. So you keep them motivated again by things. Uh, so we have a lot of uh, rituals that we try to uh, for, uh, and, you know, that show the emphasis on the fact that everyone's an equal. Uh, everyone, for example, calls each other by name. When I walk into a store, no one calls me in the store. I'm Sam. I'm Sam to everyone in the world. You can, uh, we, all, uh, we often have these rituals of inversion where um, members come up and make fun of their posture. Sometimes even outright embarrass them. You know, they, they, make, uh, they come and give jokes about their managers, about their bosses. And it's all taken in good spirit. We have, uh, like I said, you know, people can come up to me and we, they tell me about their issues. So, but don't you think this inversion ritual is again a very uh, dichotomic uh, kind of philosophy? Because I mean, just by showing that you can, uh, I mean, do anything. I mean, you can really be a boss. So, I mean, does does that show that person his place, actual place? I mean, if I end up that day, I realize that I'm a worker working for you, even though I get this five minutes of duty. But then, sure, you could think about it that way. But it's not like that. I think you know, some days I go down to stores and I walk in the road of a batter. You know, because I want to show that no one is above being a batter. Of being a rich cash flow. Then again, it is so, in the back of the it is the lowest top of that. So, like I said, unions, we just make sure that, uh, you know, people are happy. We make sure, we try and ensure that we have some happiness. We give, that people feel like they're being hurt. And that's basically the only, that's basically found the best way uh, to make sure that the unions are but uh, I mean, this is what I heard about Walmart. So you spy on employees who are trying to form unions. You have pretty strong anti-labor, anti-union labor policy. You fire, you I mean, actually fire striking workers. I mean, this just seems to me it is just like uh, justifying ends the 
it seems like spying, but if you don't ask people how they feel, how they feel. Even your management by walking around philosophy is just spying on your place, just trying to understand what they are looking for. I am just saying. But then again, uh, I mean, how do you, uh, I mean, you have a pretty high turnover rate also, which is standard for your industry, but even so far, all it is quite high. I mean, how do you manage that? Well, again, like you said, you know, it is a very endemic thing. Everyone does quit their job. And that's something really we didn't, we really want to talk about more money. You know, we try and make sure that the clients stay on. But then so, at one point, your retention rate was about like 70%, which is like, you know, far above what you just get this It's like this. We do everything we can to make sure that these employees come. But in the end, it's an industry phenomenon. People quit. So, we build it. So, what else can you do really? You work with it, right? You build it into your home. So, but we started, started our conversations with keeping our employees happy, you know, keeping them motivated. And now you are saying that you have a business model that allows this education that you do not care, really care for your employees and then you Look, there's the who is Walmart the The customer. It's the customer that keeps Walmart healthy. It's the customer that gives Walmart its profits. It's the customer that we are out to serve. And the customer doesn't come to Walmart to talk to their cashier or to have good great relations with the employees. They come for the lowest prices. That is what we promise. That is what makes Walmart such a great company. What makes Walmart so powerful. So in the end, they're here for the products. We do whatever we have to do to get them those prices. But what I have seen and what I have had a chance to meet some of your employees. So what I have seen is you tend to hire and you tend to promote the people, those kind of people who are actually good at doing whatever I mean, it takes to uh, reach those targets which are quite high and I mean, you promote that kind of behavior in your organization and I am mean, very really surprised I mean, if anybody, I really wonder why if anybody at all goes going. I, just I, I can see your arguments. Let me show you. So, uh, it just, uh, we can put it on the uh, next video. Yeah. So, what we were trying to see. So, we have given uh, different connotations uh, with, uh, you know, dreams, which is our motive. So, the first one is the point we were discussing with surplus and exploitation. Here, the dreams uh, actually denote the aspiration of owners. So, uh, I started with, I have a dream to provide the lowest prices. So, that is like the aspiration that I have to generate this humongous profit for myself and what is the co-owners. The second thing that we moved up to, I mean, this whole thing, uh, a part of the owners create this sentiments of class level. So now that means uh, actually you know the visual thing you are part of the so, so they want to be proud of working on Walmart. So Walmart has a very uh, core idea. There is a very strong idea of a Christian conservative background of workers and they have a lot of things that they do to promote that ideology. So people generally, a lot of people do feel like they are part of a Walmart community. The, the, the pro labor group is still called our Walmart. Okay, but it's, in the end it's just whatever the management can get away with in order to maximize profits for themselves. So it is all about commoditizing, commoditizing the dreams. So now Walmart becomes the objective reality. Walmart becomes the place to be, Walmart becomes everything. The over the 1.5 million of workforce just goes into the Exactly. So you when you walk into Walmart like we try to show during the dialogue, or even into any other retail store, do you really pay attention to that cash flow? Do you really pay attention to the guy who's packing your goods together? You're there only because that store provides you the best prices. So uh, the ideology that so there's a twofold ideology that we wanted to ex uh, explore here. One is the ideology that the workers want to see, the, that of a uh, company that is American, that contributes to the service, that is part, uh, that shows, uh, you know, their achievement, the achievements of the workers. But the actual ideology that Sam Walton and his uh, C-suite operates with is one of basically manipulating the employees into wanting to work at work. So. Uh, for example, like if they have a very strong, a very, uh, very hardline anti-union strategy, which is at, uh, so their union labor policies have been written down by uh, anti-labor uh, lawyers, right? And uh, they do it 
in the sense of providing another view. They have a very, but it's basically just propaganda and brainwashing that they do. Uh, on the other hand, they try and uh, you know modify these people by saying you have open door policies, you are managing by walking around where you know these store managers try and walk around just to see what the cashiers, what these bagers, what the meat packers feel. But it's just to make, but they're just making sure that they don't feel like they own the trade union. And finally, so lobbying is something that's outright direct. Sam Walton is probably one of the most virulent uh, anti-labor law uh, spokesperson out there. Every time there is a uh, regulation that wants to increase the minimum wage law, Sam Walton is opposed to Secondly, through this fiction of camaraderie and family again, it's something that they try and get the union, uh, the workers to keep them, uh, keep them pacified. So Walmart has a newsletter which they uh, circulate around, uh, around all their stores where uh, the achievements of the uh, people who work in the rank and file are published because it makes them feel like they're being listened to, that people are paying attention to their lives. But where, where is, really honestly, what does it cost for? Nothing. And who is honestly reading it again probably? Secondly, uh, you know, these stories are again, per, so the Walmart word is the name of the uh, the newsletter yeah, that they uh, propagate. Imagine family because again they have that idea of a very strong uh, rural Christian conservative background in their workforce. But they are not really uh, catering to that anymore. Uh, where Walmart are trying to cater to upscale people, the policies are changed. Where Walmart is placed in where uh, ethnic minorities are actually a majority of the local population, they hire those. Uh, so the diversity in the workforce again is something that is quite contradictory to the values that they've built up uh, themselves to uh, Just to add to Gaurav's point on uh, politics and fiction, this is not just uh, applicable to Walmart itself. So if you see uh, in the Indian IT context, there are no strong anti uh, labor laws uh, to govern the IT and IT industry. And fiction again, you have all these stories of people I mean, going to the Silicon Valley and creating those experience of others. And again, the reason, uh, the way it is used by Walmart is they are the biggest benefactor of this organization called Students in Free Enterprise that basically uh, propagates the event of capitalism and it is basically catering to the Protestant uh, Christian kind of philosophy. And then they have these daily rituals that they have put into the, in the morning chair, which uh, everybody at the government does. It has been built into the ideology of the workers. So uh, finally we come to the hypothesis and uh, we had to keep the dream chain. Uh, <laughs> so it is taken directly from uh, Ghazal by uh, Gale, Azhar by Chayati. So <laughs> we infer them in our own way, so I just want to So <laughs> the first one is uh, Azhar by Chayati, we have Paish Petam Nikle. Pohat Nikle, Mere Arma, Lekin Ferdi, Pohat Nikle. So what it signifies and denotes is the Azhar by Chayati of the owners and those uh, Khoisha or the dreams, those dreams are fulfilled at the cost of the, uh, at the cost of thousands or millions of other dreams on part of the workers. And the second, second, I mean the result or the part is Mohabbat mein nahi hai far kutine aur barne ka jisi ko dek kar jinte hai usi kaafir pe rasute So it just uh, denotes the uh, you know, helplessness of the worker class so they have to rely on Walmart to get their I mean, daily bread, but then again it is just taking the life, I mean, life force out.